please be seated. I sure have missed you guys, and I'm so thankful that you came today, and I'm so thankful for those of you that are with us online as well. This is, uh, this is one of the barriers that we've broken through to be able to really focus on reaching more people than we ever have. And who would have thought that it would take a pandemic for us to to, to, to really take a look at how we do the things that we do to, so that we can improve and so that we can make it better so we can reach more people. And so you know that we as a church family are also connected to we as a church family globally. And to me, that's the, to me, that's the most beautiful thing that has come of this moment and this season that we've all been in. And, but the Lord spoke to me specific about today back several weeks ago, and he said, the next time that you gather the people, the next time you gather my people, I want you to take communion and I want you to receive communion and serve communion to people. And, you know, even after we announced that, we saw, you know, things go in the in the wrong direction in our in our country as far as um, as far as covid went and and in the nations, so many countries, the United Kingdom just locked everything down again. Yesterday, I think they announced that, and France has done that. And, um, and no one has got it totally right. And I don't think we should ever worry about that. I think that we've done two things. We've had faith and we've had wisdom. And we said from the beginning, we're going to have faith, we're going to have wisdom. We're going to believe God, but we're also going to use common sense and respect the moment that we're in. And just in my personal journey, just to share a little bit of my heart, because I just I just am so thankful for each of you and so thankful that we have a church family that we can call home. We can call yeah. family. Yeah. And it's sometimes you have to miss out a little bit on each other to really appreciate each other the way that we're supposed to. I hope that we don't have to continue to miss out in order to appreciate one another and appreciate what we have. But I really have felt like I've been hearing God's voice clearer than ever. He hasn't made it. He hasn't made his voice clearer. His voice has always been the same. I just gotten the wax out of my ears or, you know, I just just I don't know, for whatever reason, I'm, I've been hearing God's voice from the first time when he said the first thing that I heard God say, and I don't mean to be like a broken record, but, but you already know me, so that's, you know, that's who I am, a broken record. But um, I'm a record, but I am broken, but I'm a record. Uh, so, but I think that when God spoke to me and said, believe me for increase, you can decrease all by yourself. He, he showed his humor to me. He showed his laughter, his lightheartedness to me in that moment. Believe me for increase. He told me what to do. And but you can decrease all by you can decrease all by yourself. He showed me how fun that he really is and how nothing catches him by surprise. And then he showed me um, what to do. He said, but with me, you're going to he promised me, but with me, you're going to increase. Now, he didn't promise me something that's not already in the Bible. It is in the word of God, the God of increase. And when we plant and we water, God will give us increase. God, he's the God of increase and he'll increase us in salvations. We've seen that he'll increase us in church members. We've seen that he'll increase people's finances. We've seen that we've seen many testimonies of people whose finances have increased even during this season. Maybe God's going to give you a business idea. Maybe he already has and you're going to start a business or you started a business in the midst of this. There's no reason reason not to. If God gives you an idea, if you get an idea, hey, during during this transition time of the pandemic, you know, getting back to normal life, God gives you an idea to have a business that is just for this moment and just for this time. I applaud that. I pray for that. I pray that God will give you ideas and inventions and and breakthroughs. And I'm believing for a breakthrough for all of us today. Amen. 
And, um, and so I could just go through all the things that God has spoken to me, but that was one of them. And, but just to bookend that one, the first word that I heard from the Lord about this season to the most recent one, which was gather my people for communion. I don't know what's supposed to happen after this Sunday. I'm not saying that I'm unsure, uncertain of myself or of God or of what we're doing, but I'm trusting God to make his path clear. The Bible says that um, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll make your path straight. Like I'm not responsible to make my path straight. I'm responsible to trust the Lord with all my heart. And he owns the responsibility of making my path straight. He owns the responsibility of straightening out the path. Amen. If I'm walking this way, he he knows to say, hey, son, I want you over here or something to get my attention or something to to bring me over to the right path like he's going to. He's going to make our paths straight. Amen. And I believe that for you. I believe that for me. I'm just trusting God, like trust God and love people. If we just trust God and love people, everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. You know, I, I, I got to tell you, I I just read this to you as we get ready to take it. Today's all about communion. Like I got a little bit of teaching to give you, but not I don't want to give you too much because I want us to just eat from the Lord's table. But but I do want to say that um, I sent you guys an email a couple days ago and I just want to remind everybody of this as we because we're going to pray and we're going to take communion. Um, but I do know that there's an election coming up in America and you guys all watching around the world. You know that there's an election coming up in America for, for not just president, but for so many judges and so many um, gov uh, so many senators and congressmen and women. And in other countries, they've been, you know, messaging me saying our country's having elections too, and pray for us. And, and so I, I do, what I love about life changers is and one of the things that God spoke to me is diversity or differences are not divisions. Differences are not divisions. And there's that we can have unity with diversity. And so when I look at our church and now, now I got to tell you, I got to I got to brag on you. I want to brag on you for a moment. I want to brag on us for a moment. I want to brag on us together globally. I want to brag on us together locally. I want to brag on us for a moment because everything that we've seen the nation fighting for Everything that has come up to the surface, everything that our nation is fighting for, whether it's equality, whether it's respecting one another, whether it's empathy, like I'm first in line to say I got to get better and I want to improve and I want to get better. But also I want you guys, I want to brag on you guys that we've had that. We've had equality at Life Changers. We've had diversity at Life Changers. I love, listen, I love our differences. I love, I celebrate our differences. That's why I'm not, that's why I'm not focused on just the election. I'm focused on something so much more, and that's love. I'm going to come down from being seated with Christ in heavenly places to go ahead and vote. Did you hear what I said? I'm going to come down to earthly places to help the people that don't know God yet. But for us who know Jesus in him, we live in him. We move in him. We have our being. So we're so above politics. We're so we're seated above all of that. Politics are the effect of prayer or the absence thereof. What happens in politics is the is the result of what happens with us in using our authority in heavenly places. I'm not saying so. In, in my heavenly place, I declare so and so will be elected or I declare like I declare peace will reign like in the spiritual. I declare love 
will reign. I declare healing will reign. I declare the beauty of Jesus will reign. See, I'm declaring we're declaring in the heavenly places God's will on earth as it is in heaven. We pray that and then the world plays that that plays out. And if it's not playing out well, we need to first take a look at what we're praying before we look at what we're electing or who we're electing like elections down here. Prayer is up here. Elections down here. I'm not saying they're not important. I'm not saying they're not important. I'm elevating what is more important. Like we got this, you guys, we got this. We model life changers. You model like maybe this is just for me to be your cheerleader today and then we'll figure out when to come back together next and stay connected online. But but we got this. We're doing this. You guys are doing this. You are you are. We are living out our differences without divisions. We're living out. We're living out our unity with diversity. Do you realize I realize I'm I've watched it. I've seen it. I've seen it for years. Look, there are churches people can go to where everybody votes for the same person. Everybody looks the same way. That's not who we are. That's not who we are. We have the freedom of everybody has the freedom of expression and everybody needs to have the freedom to evolve. We have to embrace the evolution of our soul. We didn't evolve from apes, but we have to embrace the evolution of our health, the evolution of our families, the evolution of our communities, the evolution of our nation and not villainize each other over it. Oh, I didn't come here to talk about politics, but I I just want you to see the perspective. And, I, and, you, and you probably heard me or read when I wrote it to you on Friday, I said no matter who wins the elections, whether you voted or planning to or anxious about the future, there's something we all need to be reminded of. No matter who wins the elections, our trust is in God. Yeah. Our joy is in his presence. Our hope is in his goodness. Our confidence is in his love. Our allegiance is to each other. N not to a party, to the party. Our allegiance needs to be to party. Our allegiance needs to be to, to party, not to a political party. Our allegiance is to have that party going on down here, a celebration to last throughout the year because it's going to have to. This is like the first time in almost a year for us to celebrate. So our celebration is going to have to last a long time together. Amen. But our allegiance is to each other. I got you. Whoever you vote for, I got you. I get you. I get to be connected with you and 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 you. And we're the church and you and you and you and you and all of us. Our mission is to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our goal is to be the best version of ourselves. Our honor is to serve. Our highest aim is to glorify God. Amen. And our ultimate responsibility is to love, is to love. And we know love never fails. Love never fails. You can step down from your seat at the table for a moment to vote, but just step right back up at your seat right after that. OK. You can even put a sign in your lawn if you want to. When you put it out there, go ahead and put it out there and then just get right back in your seat at the table. 
because Jesus has invited us to his table. Now you'll see a communion elements will be in a cup by your seat that we'll take in just a few moments. But I have to tell you that when God spoke to me to gather my people and take communion, and we're ta- we want you to take communion right where you are in your home, from in the temple and from house to house. And I want everybody out there to get your elements. Everybody get your elements if you can, because something really special is going to happen. There's going to be a healing in our in our in our physical bodies. There's going to be healing in our emotions. There's going to be healing in our church family. There's going to be a coming together, not a tearing apart, because we're honoring and we're eating the body of Christ. And we are the body of Christ. We're to eat his body, not to devour one another. We're to partake of his body and bless his body, not divide each other. And we're going to do this in a few moments, no matter where you are in the world. We're going to take communion. But God specifically said to me, I want my people to gather for communion. And so just I just ask you to follow me as I follow Christ. I know that everybody might have a different opinion of how things should be and masks and, you know, hugs and six feet or no or Thanksgiving and what, you know, let's just we've learned that Jesus goes after the one sheep. So if we save one life, it's worth it. If we save one life. I think we've learned that that during this season we 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 protect the vulnerable, we sacrifice for the for the hurting and for the suffering. And we we find the lost sheep, we find the lost son, we find the lost soul. We go after them. We go after the suffering, the hurting, we preserve, we protect. We're the church. We're the refuge. We're the refuge. We need to be the body of Christ where people can come and feel and they can be healed, whether it's online or in our in person. We need to be the body that people can run to. We need to be the family that people can run to. Even in your own personal family, even in your own upbringing, you have differences, but family is family. Even more so, the church is even more of a family. This family will live forever in heaven. And we want to bring everybody we can with us. Amen. In Luke 22, verse 19, Jesus took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The word he gave thanks is where we get the word Eucharist from. The Eucharist is known in traditional churches as communion, where this word comes from. The Eucharist is right from here. When Jesus said he had says of of him, he had given thanks. That is the word Eucharisteo in Greek. And listen to what it means. It means thankful for God's good grace, thankful for God's good grace. Eucharista, Eucharist. Tao. Oh, where is Tao, by the way? Tao. You know, we have a church member named Tao. Where's Tao? You hear Tao? Love you, Tao, wherever you are. Maybe he's in Peru ministering to our people there. But um, Eucharist Tao, thankful for God's good grace. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 21, a woman said, If only. I touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. If only I touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. I want you to understand this is communion. When we touch these communion elements, when we partake of the body and blood of Jesus, we're going to be like this woman 
we're going to get well. We're going to get well as individuals. We're going to get well as families. We're going to get well as church family. We're going to get well on behalf of our nation. We're going to get well on behalf of the nations connected to us. Everyone that touched him were healed. Everyone. And she was saying to herself, you know, sometimes we have to say some things to ourselves. Sometimes we have to say some things to ourselves. She kept saying to herself, if I only touch his garment, I'll get well. She already she already had done it. She this is what he tells her. He tells us what happened and then tells us how it happened. She got healed earlier in the chapter in verse 20. I think the her blood the virtue uh, or the the issue of blood stopped immediately in verse 19 or 20 of Matthew. It says, and the woman who had been suffering from a hemorrhage, bleeding for 12 years, came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. Because why did she touch the fringe of his cloak? Because she kept saying to herself, if I only touch his garment, I'll be made. If I only touch his garment, I will get well. If I only touch his garment, I'll be healed. If I only touch his garment, I'll be made whole. And Jesus looked around and said, who who touched me? And they said, man, Lord, the disciple said, oh, everybody's been touching you. And he said, no, I felt virtue. I felt power. Leave my body. If you guys can find that verse, I think it's in Luke's in Luke's version in chapter five. It says he said, no, I I felt virtue. I felt power. Leave me when somebody touched me. He didn't even know who did it. But the. But she came up and she said it was me. And he's like, daughter, your faith has made you well. What was her faith in? Her faith was in his body. Her faith was in his body. That's that's where it says it in Luke five or Luke eight, uh, 46. But Jesus said, no, somebody did touch me for I, I felt power went out of me. Another translation says virtue, virtue left me. Virtue power, anointing. Oh, I believe that's happening here today. I don't believe that communion is just a ceremony. I really believe it is a spiritual and physical exchange with Jesus. We're exchanging whatever you need. You're exchanging your sickness for his healing. You're exchanging your uncertainty with his wisdom. We're exchanging. See, we're taking we're receiving him. We're receiving his love for our fear. We're receiving his peace for our for our sorrow, our depression. We're receiving joy for our sorrow. We're receiving beauty for our ashes. We have but ashes to bring. And yet he turns them into beauty. This is what I believe Jesus does this 2000 years ago on the cross, but it manifests whenever anybody decides I'm going to eat of his body and I'm going to drink of his blood. I didn't come to have church today. We are the church. I came to lead us in receiving his precious body and blood. There's a day I'd have made sure you knew exactly where the offering container was. Where's the offering container in church today? There was a day where I really mattered to me. Those days are gone and for me. I, don't, I want you to give, but I I'm trusting God to really, really bless you big time. And at any time we ever receive an offering online or on site, it's it's because I want you to experience the generous life for the world of the generous Proverbs 11 says gets larger and larger. 
while the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. I want us to be the generous. I want your world to get bigger and better. I want my world to get bigger and better. For, for why? Because I'm so I can be blessed to be a blessing. Amen. I want to be a blessing. I want I'm, I'm in this world in this season of my life just to be a blessing. If my life doesn't bring a blessing to you, I don't belong in your life. But if my life if my life brings a blessing to you, let's stay connected. Let's stay connected. Let's stay connected. I'm living for no other reason right now in my life. My children are doing a way better job than I did years ago. Our staff is doing better than we've ever done. Our team is in, so thankful for them. They've been serving behind the scenes every day, hours upon hours upon hours. We don't really realize we don't really realize sometimes we're looking for sometimes we're looking, you know, we're at the house waiting to have dinner and invite the kids over because, you know, they don't fit in our house anymore. Right. And they don't you know, we deliberate. That was a that was a, my plan. Right. But uh, <laughs> let's downsize so nobody can live here anymore. We're so downsized, we're going to move out, we think. <laughs> Bumping into grace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bumping into the walls. Um, but we're be like, where's Olivia? It's eight o'clock. Where's Olivia? Oh, she's still at the church. Where's you know, where, where's Joseph? Where's her? Oh, they're recording worship. They're rehearsing. They're these guys, man, they serve Brandon and Marla and just all of our staff, Chandler and Savannah and like just oh I'm sure I miss so many. All y'all. <laughs> the church is my family. And I cannot be who I'm meant to be without my church family. Amen. The church cannot fully accomplish her purposes in this world. If I withhold my presence, if you withhold your presence and believe me, online presence matters. And we have learned for seven or eight months how our online presence has been the difference in people's eternal souls. So many have gotten saved. So many have become a part and found family. We hear people all the time tell us from all over South Africa, um, Angela from North Carolina, Angelia, uh, Gerard from South Africa. I'm I'm I was introduced here to your connecting your ministry. Ralph healed from depression, like all these people. I just go on and on all these people all over the world. So online presence matters, but just our presence alone. I want you to know both here and online. We can't be who we're created to be without each other. It's not just we're to we don't tolerate diversity. We celebrate it. We celebrate it. We realize we're the body of Christ from God's point of view. There's one race, the one human race. There's from God's point of view. It's like, how could you get caught up in? How are you? How did you guys get caught up in color? How did you guys get caught up in size or shade or gender? How did you get caught up in your nationalities? God, from God's perspective, he's like, we're one. Now, there's some injustices that have to be made right. But I'm telling you, man's never going to get it right without God. Amen. 
Man's never going to get it right without the gospel. You take the gospel out of a country. You take the gospel out of our schools. You take prayer out of the schools. You take prayer out of a nation. You take prayer out of a city. You take prayer out of a family. Take it out of your life. Take the word out of your life. There is no hope. Amen. So we have got to be the light and the salt. Okay, as we take communion, God's going to right every wrong. I want you to know he's going to right every wrong. He's going to right every wrong. He's going to right every wrong that people have done to you. He's going to right every wrong that time has done to you. He's going to right every wrong the devil has done to you. He's going to right every wrong you've done to you. He is going to right every wrong. He is our avenger. In 1 Corinthians 11, verse 26, Paul says, Jesus, he's quoting Jesus, just as you know, the Lord Jesus himself said, he said, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So many Christians have seen that as a negative thing. To proclaim the Lord's death is only a positive thing. To proclaim the Lord's death is it means it is finished. We're proclaiming tetelestai. We're proclaiming it is finished. As we take communion together today, we're proclaiming his death. We're proclaiming to our past. We're proclaiming another word for this in the new in the King James Bible. It says for his not he doesn't use the word proclaiming. He uses the word show. He said, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you're showing the Lord's death till he comes. You're showing the Lord's death. Who are we showing the Lord's death to? We're now showing the Lord's death to the Lord. He already knows about his death. What we're doing is we're showing the Lord's death to our past. We're showing the Lord's death to our pain. We're showing the Lord's death to our previous limitations. We're proclaiming to our sickness the Lord's death. We're proclaiming to the virus the Lord's death. We're proclaiming to our nation the Lord's death. When we take communion, we are proclaiming to our fears. We're proclaiming the Lord's death and the proclamation and the showing of his death on the cross to our bodies brings healing to our minds and our emotions bring peace. We are showing and we are proclaiming. I want you to get this. When we take communion, we're proclaiming the Lord's death, proclaiming the Lord's death to what? We're proclaiming the Lord's death to whatever bondage is in our life. We're proclaiming the Lord's death to whatever addiction is in our life. We're proclaiming the Lord's death to our weaknesses. We're proclaiming the Lord's death to our weaknesses. We're proclaiming the Lord's death to our emotions. We're proclaim proclaiming the Lord's death to our past, our fears, our doubts. We're proclaiming the Lord's death to our DNA. Well, I grew up like this. Well, we're proclaiming I'm, I'm proclaiming the Lord's death to how I grew up so that the Lord's death fixes what grew up broken. I am showing to my identity I am found in him. I am showing to my body I am healed by his stripes. I'm showing to my mind that I have the peace of God. You're showing the sickness, the Lord's death, and the sickness bows to the Lord's death. You're showing your lack, the Lord's death, and your lack turns into abundance. You're showing your anxiety, the Lord's death, and peace flows like a river. This is our moment. Where we take where we have the opportunity for the grace of God to break through into our lives when we take communion at the table, at the table in Exodus 25, 30, he says, you shall set the bread of the presence on the table before me at all times. And I love what the new King James says, Exodus 25, verse 30. You shall set the showbread on the table before me always. It's showbread. It's the bread of his presence. We're taking the communion. We're receiving communion. We're taking his body and we're proclaiming his death. And we're showing his death to any stubborn thing in our lives. 
and that thing has to yield. Gone are the days where anybody is going to have to be skeptical. I don't know. It's about what are you talking about eating bread and drinking a cup and somehow God's invisible power is you know, come on, Can we really can we really trust in an invisible power that, that manifests in the bread and the and the wine? Look around at the world wearing masks over an invisible power. Yeah. If we believe in that invisible power, we should be believe in this invisible power far more because greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with how we're handling things, but there may be there may not be. That's not my issue. That's not my battle. But it's to prove to you that people everybody on earth believes in visible in invisible power. It's just which power are we going to yield to and bow our knee to yeah. and which invisible power are we going to trust? As for me and my house, we're going to trust in the Lord. We're going to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. It's showbread. It shows our pain healing. It shows our limitations breakthroughs. I really want you to get this. This is God's. This is the bread of his presence. It's proclaiming the Lord's death. So right now, let's take let's take a moment. Everybody grab your communion elements and just say this with me. In the name of Jesus. When I eat this bread, I am proclaiming the Lord's death. To everything in my life, I am announcing the Lord's death. I am showing that his death brought me forgiveness, brought me healing, brought me deliverance, brought me breakthroughs. And when I eat this bread, the manifestation of my healing, of my breakthrough, of my deliverance, of my freedom, is going to show up. I receive the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's be made well together. Now, before we drink from this cup, and if you feel uncomfortable and you don't want to lower your mask to take it, that's fine. Take it at home. Take it in your car. If you've never received Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, right now is the moment. Right now, he's calling you. He loves you so. He's calling you. He's calling us. Anybody who's not saved yet, let's bow our heads together before we drink the cup. Pray this with me if you'd like to be born again, if you'd like to be saved. And everybody pray this with us for those that may be praying for the first time. Just pray this. Heavenly Father, I invite Jesus Christ into my life as my Savior and Lord. I believe Jesus died for my sins and rose from the dead. From this moment forward, I'm a child of God. The blood of Jesus cleanses me from all my sin. If you prayed that prayer with every head bowed, if you prayed that prayer to receive Jesus, I'm going to count to three on the count of three. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Or if you're watching online, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand right where you are. Maybe you're the only one there, but raise it before God on the count of three. If you prayed that prayer, one, two, three, quickly, right where you right where you are. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You guys that are at home, you guys, wherever your hand is up, I bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless you in Jesus name. I bless you in Jesus name. There's a little book that I want you to get. You can download it anywhere in the world. There should be a link on the screen or there'll be a link in the comment box. And I want you to get this book, The Power of a New Life. It's available for you. It's free. It'll go show you the next steps now in this new relationship with God. And now let's pray together as we take the cup and say in the name of Jesus, when I drink this cup, I am receiving all of the benefits, all of the manifestations of Jesus precious blood. I am in a covenant with God that cannot be broken because it's sealed in blood. I receive all the power, 
all the mercy, all the grace that's in his blood. And I receive wholeness. I am made well in Jesus name. Amen. Let's receive the cup. The beautiful cup of Jesus, the beautiful cup of blessing. Let's stand together whenever you're done. Just stand with us. You can put your stuff back in the cup if you want and we'll and you can just leave it there. We'll get it. You don't have to dispose of it. If you want to yourself, you can, but we'll take care of it. Let's just lift our hands. Just trust. Let's trust God, everybody. When's our next gathering? Well, every Sunday and every Wednesday we're online and we'll we'll follow the leading of the spirit and you'll we'll make it very clear when our next time in house and in person is to be together. And believe me, I pray about it every single day for a long time every day <laughs> and just trusting God, praying for you. Come on, let's lift our hands and worship him before we leave. Come on, let's just worship just him. Just on. one touch and everything changes, everything changes and with one word. God bless.